Okay. Uh, my name is Alan Livingston, and I founded iPhobotics uh, back in August, and our focus is uh, the new and emerging collaborative robotic market and developing standardized solutions um, around that technology. And for early risers this month, you are working on a, uh, a COVID pivot um, related to, to helping fulfill some of the needs of the COVID-19 crisis, correct? Um, yes, I started working on a project in conjunction with a couple other uh, small businesses in the area to uh, make masks, cloth masks, non-surgical um, for individuals to use. Uh, initially, the focus was on uh, some of our employees and the people that we work with, but also uh, wanting to reach out to some of the healthcare providers and first responders and have something that uh, would be available with them until the mass production is able to keep up. So what kind of uh, response uh, have you been getting? Uh, and are you, do you have any actually, actually rolling out yet? Uh, we just got the uh, the first batch coming out that are uh, they're still handmade and hand sewn uh, uh, at a local company, and this is a uh, one of the the patterns we have. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, so hopefully that's not too offensive to anybody. Um, less controversial than any of the local teams, I'm sure. Uh, but this is a um, uh, the first version of the mask, it has, it's made of a nice uh, cloth fabric on the outside. Um, there's uh, soft uh, cotton material on the inside, and there's a pocket to uh, use replaceable filters. Right now we're using a bamboo uh, towel material, uh, but I also have on order the uh, PM 2.5 replaceable uh, dust uh, dust. Uh, filters for those that, that can be used and replaced. Uh, one thing that's also unique is that we're using the um, paracords and the stops to make them um, more comfortable and uh, also adjustable to different sizes. So it's uh, it, it still is uh, fairly expensive to make, making them by hand, but long term, you know, we'll look at um, if the need continues to automate the processes, get the cost down, and then um, if there's a way to potentially use collaborative robots today. And so, tell me a little bit, a little bit about that, um, about that world of, of collaborative robots. Uh, for folks that that is a new term, um, kind of what does that, what does that mean, and what does that look like? Uh, the term collaborative means that an operator can work in conjunction with the robot side by side without additional safety. And uh, the reason for that is there's uh, sensors within the robot that allow it to sense if it bumps into something and it'll stop. There's also uh, additional safety you can use with laser scanners to where if you are doing an operation where you can't let the operator get right on top of the robot, you can still have the robot stop and pause and then go back to work when the operator's clear. So in, in the past, you always had, you either had to shut the robot down or you had to enclose it in a cage, and that type of interaction uh, wasn't possible. Now it is, and then another uh, big benefit of the collaborative robots is that they're much easier to program. Um, they're not as flexible or capable as traditional robots, but the uh, ease of use has allowed them to be um, more readily deployed in small businesses and doing repetitive tasks so that the operators can maybe tend more machines than one and provide you know better value in, in the process. Awesome. So how how did you get involved kind of in this world and, and how did you get started with, with iCobotics in particular? Well I've uh, I spent my whole career working in uh, industrial robots. I um, graduated from Sinclair at, with a drafting and design degree, and then I got my Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering at Wright State. And uh, my first job out of Wright State, getting connected uh, uh, with some help there with a local manufacturer, I went into robotics. 
a small company. And then um, after a few years, I joined uh, Yaskawa Motor Man, uh, which uh, their headquarters is down at Austin Landing, and uh, spent 20 years uh, working uh, for them. And uh, one of my last projects was launching their uh, smart series collaborative robot uh, program. And once I completed that, uh, just was really passionate about the technology and I wanted to focus on it full time and uh, had a vision on some things to develop. And, and that's why I went out about it. So what are those, um, in particular, um, being able to, to bring robotics into those some of those smaller businesses, um, what does that mean for those small businesses as far as um, how they're able to compete in the market? Uh, you know, since the, the robots right now are being deployed doing simple tasks, it's allowed uh, factories to have more consistent throughput and to keep uh, machines running. Uh, unfortunately, right now there's a, a shortage of labor, um, whether it's availability or, or people may not want to do some of the, the work that uh, is more mundane, not as much value added. So a lot of companies, even with the use of temp agencies, are struggling to maintain their production. So this way, they're able to deploy robots doing repetitive tasks and then allow their current employees to be more efficient, more effective, and then some of their process leaders will actually get trained on robot technology so that they can uh, be a crew chief, if you will, of managing multiple machines, and that allows them to have a career path and develop and, and earn more money. So that's really the, the value proposition right now with the, the smaller businesses. And so with the with the pivot to the face masks um, during during this during these interesting times, uh, how did that come about and how did how did you make the decision uh, to 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 go for that? Uh, well, the uh, uh, friend of mine that I'm um, subletting from that uh, we kind of help each other has a roofing business, uh, James Reedy with um, constructive project management. And uh, he was looking at uh, the bamboo material and coming up with a mask that he could use in general just for dust protection uh, because most of the masks are uncomfortable. So he was kind of played with it a little bit and this happened and uh, we just started working on some ideas and got a bunch of material together and I had an idea for the paracord and some other things and we just got a stapler and started making a bunch of prototypes. And actually, you know, they worked out pretty well. He wore them on the job site. And then uh, as we refined it, we realized that uh, uh, to get out of the concept phase, we needed to uh, engage someone that actually knew how to uh, make them properly. So we uh, engaged with uh, Julie Grice at uh, Classic Stitch in Miamisburg and their help you know, produce the mass, and uh, now we just want to get some out, uh, try and cover our costs, and then find a way to make them more cost effectively. Uh, possibly connect with manufacturers that can, that have the supply chain and, and the ability and the equipment to reduce the cost and share the information just so that more can get out. Um, we're going to be limited in how many we can make, and the cost is, um, you know, not that efficient, but. Um, this is where we're at in the process, and if we can get some help from other companies and make a bigger difference, we'd love to be part of that. That is all of the questions uh, that I had prepped to ask you. Um, is there anything about uh, the company um, or your entrepreneurial journey that I didn't think to ask? Um, it, no, it, you know, it's been, it's been a... Uh, very exciting and rewarding uh, to go out and do this. Um, and, you know, with any upside, there's a downside. It's a little bit uh, anxious moment. But then again, um, you know, to be able to contribute and, and help others is, is really important. And, and actually, it's um, I've had several orders in the past couple of weeks because small businesses now have time to invest in doing some upgrades and improving their efficiencies. Um, where they didn't have that before because 
one thing with the small businesses is they need to install the equipment themselves. Even though it'll take them longer, um, they just can't afford to hire an engineering company to do that. So there's been many uh, small business companies reach out and are interested in getting started. Um, so that's actually helped my business, which now I'm I'm uh, trying to pivot, but I'm also meeting my goals of starting up. So I'm, I'm getting pulled in a couple of different directions, but uh, those are good problems to have. Awesome. Uh, well, then the one, uh, the last question I have for you that I always like to end with, um, why do you love what you do? Uh, I love creating things. I love uh, designing things. Um, grew up working with my hands and combining that with the engineering degree um, really gave me a unique set of skills. And I like robotics because I've been able to design custom systems in any manufacturing process you can think of over the past 25 years. And um, that just really motivates me and, and keeps me excited. It keeps things fresh. And, uh, you know, now I'm at a point in my career where hopefully I can, um, you know, give back. One of the things that I want to do is um, eventually have, you know, co-op students connect with the universities and help uh, others get started uh, because, uh, you know, the co-op program at Sinclair and working at Delphi and meeting mentors there and several others along the way that have helped me get where I'm at. Um, I want to be able to give back and provide that to others.